Now I want to thank a very powerful man that has worked with me, partnered with God to make me who I am today. And this man has, has waited on God with me in tears. Some of you know our testimony. Praise atmosphere worth birth because God asked us to raise an altar for him and give a sacrifice that will cost us. And some of you thought that this is just an event. It is not an event. It is a place we birthed out of pain because we waited on God for 10 years for, uh, for the fruit of the womb. And we, so many of you know, those who think Agunda is Nigeria, and Agunda is from West and two upper two. <laughs> and you know, the first year we got married, the third month, people are looking and calling. See, you know, Bado Ajakuja, Ajakuja. The first year, the second year, the third year, still waiting on God. The fourth year, still waiting on God. The fifth year, until my husband started realizing there are some changes in my body. And he said, can we try and go and see a doctor? I said, no. My God is my doctor. And he said, you know, yes, God is our doctor, but you need to go. The woman in me, the faith in me, those who know me, Agunda is an introvert. I am the other one. And he said, we have to go and see a doctor. He said, it is our fifth year in marriage and I believe there is grace, but God will do it. I am walking the journey with you. I'm not letting you go. I'm not looking for another wife. I, you are my wife, the wife of my youth. And we started going to see the doctors. And we visited the doctors. Tell your neighbor, visited the doctors. And the women who go to the gynecologist, you know. And my husband used to stand right there, seeing everything. Sometimes I'm so embarrassed, but he says, we are in this journey. I told you we are in this journey together. The sixth year, the seventh year, I told God, God, this is the number of perfection. Perfect it. I'm still serving you. And those who know me, how I used to introduce my husband. We produce music and? Amen. Children. And every time we we'll go to the green room to just say hello to the pastors or guests, they will ask us, so how many babies do you have? And every man of God will start laying hands. Tell your neighbor to make a long corner. <laughs> I think even all of you have been praying for us. And the seventh year. And the eighth year, I told God, now, eight is the number of new beginnings. Something new must be. God, we are still waiting for you. And I will sing Waweza. And I will re receive a testimonies while you are ministering. God bless me with a bouncing baby boy, twins. And I will still sing and go home to an empty house. And on the ninth month, where we live, our neighbor has children, and every morning would hear the boy saying, Daddy, I love you. Good day. And the dad would say, Bless you, my son. Good day. And I'll, my husband will be like, hey, I can't wait for us to say goodbye to our son like that. And it will kill me inside. And one morning I woke up and I was so mad at God. And I gave God an ultimatum. And I say, God, I'm going downstairs in my living room. And I went down on my knees. I felt knees is not working. I laid down. It is not working. What should I do, God? And I cried like a crazy woman. I cried. And I told God, you know what? I will never, ever in my life 
talk to you about children again. This is it. And I went to the barber shop. Those who know me, I love hair. I told the barber, cut my hair. Because the hair is the glory of a woman. There is no glory in me anymore. And I cut my hair. And sometimes I would post on social media and women will go like, I love your new hairstyle. <laughs> but inside of me, I was hurting. I was so wounded and I was so bitter with God. Because I was seeing and saying, Wawesa, Wawesa Mokosi, Wawesa. And then I said, Okay, God, you are able. Indeed, your word says that you are able to do exceedingly abundantly. You are not doing it for me. Let me sing a new song. Zaidi I and I told God I will keep serving you but I will never I will never test for pregnancy again and my husband kept on going with me to the hospitals and this doctor one day said so let's try six months. Six months ended. I said, doctor, this medicine I'm taking too much. Why am I not getting pregnant? He said, let's try another six months again. Six months is too long. And every time my husband will say that there is grace in waiting. And I'm telling him, which grace? I don't have grace. It is not working for me. It's not my thing. It hit me so hard when some of my friends would do baby showers and they would not invite me. And it would kill me. And I would ask, why haven't you invited me for your baby shower? They're like, if we start discussing some things, they will hurt you. I'm saying, just invite me. I need to learn because my time will come. And it will kill me. And I remember the ninth year, the ninth year, in May, we got an invitation to go to Tanzania to minister. But before that, my father-in-law used to call us every time we'd get out of the country to go and minister and pray for us. So this day we went in the evening and he prayed for us. My mother-in-law is in the room tonight. My entire family is here tonight. They have walked the journey with us. And my husband and I, we had agreed that we will never discuss this issue of baby with our families. Because sometimes we would hear things. You know, when you go to the village, you hear things. And so, while we were about to leave the house, as we were putting on our shoes, my husband just turned to his dad and asked him, Daddy, if we get a baby, what should we call the baby? And the dad said, call him Mshili. And I just looked at him like, why would you talk to dad about this issue? We have never discussed it before. And he said, I don't even know where it came from. And so we traveled to Tanzania. And when we traveled to Tanzania, we came back and that week, our dad went to be with the Lord. It was the hardest season in our lives. He was the priest of our family. And I felt as if some, a piece of me had been taken away. I had a tour in the US. That week I had to cancel it. Did the burial. And decided now to go to the US the following week. In the plane, everybody was smelling. Tell your neighbor smelling. 
In fact, the man that was seated in, next to me was literally smelling. Thank God for the masks. And I was craving for pilau. Sema pilau. When I arrived in America, I said, I want pilau. I ate pilau, and the pilau was not working for me. I vomited all of it. I went to the altar, and I was, as I was singing, I asked for ice cubes and Doritos. Do you know Doritos? It's like crisps. And man of God is looking at me and asking, why are you eating crisps on the altar? I don't want to let it go. And the wife of the pastor said, I think you're pregnant. I laughed. I said, me, pregnant. I've been waiting for pregnancy all these years. Today is when it's coming. And I didn't, want, I didn't want to believe it because I had tested so many times. And the line always came negative. My friend said, you have to test because your character is just weird. I said, before I test, I want Ugali and Skuma in America. <laughs> they looked for Ugali and Skuma and I ate. And I vomited. She went and bought the pregnancy strip and brought it to me and said, I cannot test it when you guys are here. I'll test it tomorrow. This was something so special to me. The following morning, I went to the bathroom. Just like Kawaida, I remembered, oh, I, they bought that strip. Let me go and try and test. Just try. I tested and then I just put it up there because the line was just the pink line. I just put, put there. And then I continued browsing. I went to the bathroom with my top phone and I was browsing. As I flashed the toilet and I'm about to walk out, I saw a line, a fading line. And I'm like, are you sure? I was so confused until I fell in the bathroom. I was so confused. I took a screenshot and sent to my husband. He was online. One second was 10,000 years for us, for me. Hello? Hello? Uno, una laini, una laini. <laughs> and it's like... <laughs> and my husband is like... You know you've been sick the entire time and you said people are smelling in the, in the, in the plane. <laughs> this is my friend. This is my friend. And he said, I think you're hallucinating. Because even for him, he didn't believe I can be pregnant. <laughs> because we had waited for too long. I said he's not understanding me. Let me take water again. I took water. I stayed in the bathroom. I took another test. This time I was so keen. <laughs> and the line came. And the second one line came. <laughs> and I fell in the bathroom and my host was so stressed because I was just crying alone, weeping. And I felt my husband, I understand him, Moshenei Mwinki. Let me call my mom. Mothers in the room. There was a day my mom cried to the Lord and said, God, take my womb and give it to my daughter. She was so tired of praying. She said, me, I'm not giving birth again. Take my womb and give it to her. And this is the hardest prayer I've ever heard my mom praying. And when I called my mom, mom, eh? I started crying before I told her anything. And she's like, who else is dead? Who else is dead? <laughs> because we had just buried my father-in-law. I said, wame kufanya nini America? Nini wame kufanya? I said, mom, I am pregnant. I think she'd not understand the English. I said, Mom, Nick on a member, and my mom took it from me. Ooh, yeah! And she started crying. And she started crying and praying. 
And this was the most beautiful news. I think my husband, where he was, I think he just, he, because he never called again. <laughs> and the next thing he wrote and said, I'm waiting for my family at the airport. I did not continue with my tour in America. I had to come immediately. Why? Because I did not want people to start saying that he went to get pregnant there. <laughs> the following day, I was in my, the next plane. And when I arrived at the airport, my husband was so white. I think he had stayed at the airport the whole night. <laughs> and he... Re I changed my walking style. I was walking like a pregnant woman. <laughs> I did not know that pregnant women don't, are not allowed to carry heavy things, so I was carrying my suitcases and putting them. I did not know. And when I arrived, my husband said, let's go to the doctor and see if, if the baby is okay. We arrived and the doctor said, the baby is not okay. The baby is growing downwards. You have a, 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 a threatened abortion. So I was put on bed rest for two weeks and I had a live recording that was coming up. And when I called my MD, Amani, I told him, listen, I don't want anybody to know what is going on. Because my mother-in-law had told me even Jesus was hidden. So this one we are hiding because the enemy is not happy. And all team thought I had COVID. And so I stayed in the house for eight months. If I could hear a guest coming, I would go upstairs quickly, hide. My sister-in-law, Maureen, who has stood with me, my pregnancy journey has been the hardest. I didn't want, didn't want to see anybody. I hated color yellow, say yellow. <laughs> and the ninth month, one day to our wedding anniversary, Dr. Nyamu says that you are about to give birth. And I was taken to the hospital and the labor ward. For eight hours I labored. It was the hardest. I don't know what those who have ten children. Mama <laughs> Rachel, I know you have many. I don't know how. And this man was there. This man, yeah. my friend. Even if I don't sing today, this is the only reason why we're here tonight to say, see what the Lord has done. And Dr. Nyamu says, the baby is not okay. He's He's, he's, he has turned, he's looking up, I don't know, upwards, something. So I can, I'm labor until my body has become cold. They rushed me at 2 a.m. in the theater. And Mushindi came to us. One day to our wedding anniversary. Such a joy. But I want just to encourage a couple that has been in waiting. Men, some men leave their wives because of this. This man, you are my friend. When I was pregnant, seventh, ma seventh month, Pastor Nathaniel released, see what the Lord has done. And we were in our bedroom. It was the first time I clicked. I said, let me listen to this new release. 
And I think we did not leave the room the whole day. I was holding my belly and I would scream and cry like a crazy woman because indeed the Lord had wiped away our tears. And I remember when I posted, I will tell you this, why we had to hide our, bl our blessings. It is because not every blessing is to, for you to release it out there for people to hear. Some things you have to hide until they mature. Is there a couple who is trusting God for a fruit of the womb here? Is there a couple? Is there someone? If you are there, stand up. I see so many of you. Trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Tonight, as you're worshiping, I don't need to lay any hands, I don't need to pray for you. But your faith has brought you in the presence of the master. Our faith, let our faith ignite your faith. We are standing here as a testimony because Mungu ametu heshimisha. In front of everybody that thought we are barren. You might be barren in your business, it's not growing. I don't know where there is barrenness and drought in your life. But fruitfulness is coming. Like a tree that has been cut. And it seems as if it will never grow again. It will still touch Katena. Tonight, let there be something peculiar that will happen in your life. Honey, thank you. Thank you for loving me. You are the best husband in the entire world. Umekuwa mwema kwangu na shindwa kueleza e baba. Na shindwa kueleza e baba e 